welcome back to the video. In this lesson, we're going to look at the five number summary. So the five number summary consists of some of the concepts we talked about earlier, um, which would be the median, the quartiles, so the first and the third quartiles, and the extremes, the max and the min, which of course we use to find the range. Here's the, those seven numbers that we looked at earlier. We're going to have the TI-84 plus find the five number summary for us, which you'll find very useful um, throughout the course. We're going to be um, calculating the five number summary and using it to um, describe our distribution. So to do that, I'm going to go into my uh, calculator app. Um, and at the time when I downloaded this app, it was free. Uh, so if you need an app, that works very similarly to the TI-84 Plus. This is a great one to use. It's called Calculate 84. Anytime we wanna enter a list of numbers, we're just gonna go into the Stat button, which is two buttons to the right of the green one, and then just click Enter where you see Edit. I already have my numbers typed into my list. If you already have numbers typed into the list, just make sure you highlight L1 and hit Clear. Do not hit Delete. Um, delete will delete the whole column, which you don't want. You just want the numbers to go away while retaining that column. So once my numbers are listed there, um, all I need to do now is go back to stat again. And this time I want to go to calc. So you're going to hit the right arrow. And we have one variable, just one column, one variable, whatever those numbers represent. We're going to hit enter. And normally you don't have to change anything here. Um, my, our list of numbers is an L1. And then frequency list we just leave alone and then hit enter. And then you get your five number summary along with some other summary statistics that we haven't talked about yet, like um, X with that bar on top, it's called X bar, it's the sample average. Um, it gives us the sum of the X's. So if we were to add the numbers in our list, that's what Sigma X is, that Greek symbol that looks like an E. Um, we have the sum of the squared X's. And then we have the standard deviation of the sample and the population. And then comes our five number summary. So n is just our sample size it's telling us there's seven numbers and right underneath that is the five number summary you've got your extremes your min and your max the median and then the quartiles okay so the calculator will give you your five number summary so you don't have to calculate it by hand um, if the data set is, is small enough then it's certainly easy enough to do that but if you have a large data set then feel free to use the calculator to um, you know calculate the five number summary Okay, so all we're gonna do is write those numbers down. So you've got the min, which is negative 17.5. And then of course the max is your other extreme. And that was the highest number, which is 45.8. The median, which is the middle number when the numbers are in order it was 13.9. And then you've got your lower quartile, Q1, also known as the 25th percentile, that was 2.8. And then the upper quartile, Q3, or the 75th percentile, which was 25.3. And once we have the five number summary of our quantitative variable, we can display that information in another type of graph called a box plot. So box plots, you can add that to your list of um, appropriate graphs for quantitative variables, along with histograms, stem plots, dot plots, etc. So what I need to do is to create this box plot, box plot I need to find um, fences, okay? And the reason I do that is I need to figure out if we have any outliers. So would any of these numbers here be outliers? Um, so first I'm going to um, draw my box plot, the number line, I'm gonna label it. And I just need to make sure that I have the box plot uh, number line is big enough to fit all the numbers. So since my lowest number is negative 17.5, I might wanna start at negative 20 and my max is 45.8, so I'm gonna go out to 50. And then I'm gonna to try to 
see if I can um, label this uh, spaced out evenly. So let's see, we would do um, negative 10 and then 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, not bad. They're pretty evenly spaced. So to find where my fences go, I need to take my IQR. So remember the IQR is just Q3 minus Q1. So 25.3 minus 2.8. And that gives me 22.5, okay? But I'm gonna go to my calculator. So 25.3 minus 2.8. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that answer by 1.5. And I get 33.75. Okay, so my next step was to do um, 1.5 times 22.5. And I got 33.75. And what I do is I take my Q1, which is 2.8, and I subtract that number I just got, 33.75. And I get negative 30.95. Okay, that's where one of my fences would go. So if I was to, in other words, continue this number line, okay? And let's say I had negative 30 maybe right there. Negative 30.75 means that anything that would be on the left of that fence is gonna be an outlier. And since the smallest number we have here is negative 17.5, there's no outliers on the lower end. I need to figure out my upper fence though. So to do that, I take my Q3 and I add this value that I came up with. So I'm gonna do 25.8 plus 33.75. Okay, and I get 59.55. So if I was to continue a little bit further, as you can see, right? So if I went out to negative 60, negative 59.55 is right about there. And since my highest number is 45.8, I don't have any outliers on the upper end either. But let's say this highest number here was like 70. Well, 70 would be an outlier, and to indicate it, I would just put a dot, okay? And I wouldn't connect it to the rest of the box plot. But I know that I don't have any extreme values, so that's good. So now all I need to do is draw the box plot. So to do that, I'm just gonna, for right now, put dots um, at the following five numbers. So negative 17.5, so maybe that's like right about there. And then I have another one at 2.8, so that might be like right there, 13.9, 25.3, and I'm gonna need some space here, so let me slide my work up a little bit. Um, and then my next dot is 45.8, okay? So we draw a box around the IQR, which would be Q1 to Q3. We draw a vertical line through the median, and then we draw whiskers out to each of the extreme values, the min and the max. And that's it, that's your box plot. So what can I tell from it? Well, I can tell that it's approximately, the distribution is symmetric, okay? Because it looks like I can fold it down the middle and it's about the same on either side. Um, I can also see that my inner quartile range is pretty large. So that means there's a lot of variability um, between those values. And if you look at your values, right? So if I go from 
Q1 to Q3, if I go back and look at that, um, and if I was to look at these numbers in order, right, my Q1 is 2.8 and my Q3 is 25.3. Well, there's a lot of difference in the numbers between them. Like after 2.8 comes 13.9 and then it jumps to 14.1. Then it jumps up to 25.3. So that's why this box is uh, longer. If it was more compact, it means there's not as much variability there. And that's gonna be important for later on. What I'd like you to do right now is take a minute and pause the video and read the problem. And remember that we wanna think, show, and tell for this problem, okay? And I kinda of gave you some guidance um, in this problem, but we'll work it out together. And then you can feel free to unpause the video uh, when you're ready. It says the US Bureau of Transportation Statistics reports data on airline flights. Let's look at data giving the percentage of flights canceled each month from January 1994 through September 2019. How often are flights canceled? So typically you could go to that website, you could find the data, and then you can have um, technology make the box plot or histogram or dot plot, whatever you'd like to make. Um, so you could use like your TI-84 calculator, which may be a little time consuming because there's probably a lot of data there. Um, it would probably be more appropriate to use StatCrunch, which is available through your um, MyLab statistics. Um, you can also use, if you're familiar with programming, like R Statistical Programming or SPSS or SAS or things like that. Okay, so to save you the time, I provided you the histogram and the box plot. So, you know, two ways that you can show quantitative data. Here we've got the number of months that that involves and then the, num the percentage of flights canceled, okay? And then we have the box plot underneath so that you can compare them. In chapter four, we're going to look at how to compare these uh, displays. And then I gave you some summary statistics, including the five number summary. So you've got your max and your min and your Q1, your Q3 and your median, right? So right here, this part represents my five number summary. And remember, of course, that the IQR is just Q3 minus Q1. So if you were to take 2.19 and subtract 1.1, 1. Uh, 1, you would get 1.09. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna look at this and we wanna describe the distribution. So the first thing we wanna think about is, okay, what's the variable? Do I know the who, what, when, where, why, and how? Um, so, um, give me a second here. I'm going to set this up so I can type. I think it would be easier for you all to written out. Okay, so here I want to know about light cancellations um, at U.S. airports from 1994 to 2019, okay? And as we can see here, um, you know, we are given 308 months, right? So that's a lot of months to look at. All right, so um, how am I going to get the data? I have the data, I have the histogram and box plot from the data provided from the Bureau of um, Transportation Statistics. Okay. Now I've got my histogram, my box plot, and my summary statistics. What is it telling me? Okay, that's what I wanna show now. So what can I see from this? The histogram definitely shows um, a unimodal distribution, right? So I can see the mode here, the peak. Um, I wanna know also you know, besides being unimodal, what other shape is it? Well, it's definitely skewed to the right, okay? 
So that takes care of the shape. Do I have any outliers? Yeah, I'd say I have a couple maybe out there, right? Um, and where is the data centered? And, you know, let's talk about the spread. Well, remember, a typical type of center that we can use is the median for right now, okay? So um, the median uh, percentage of canceled flights would be about 1.65%, right? Um, and we also know measure of spread, we can either talk about the range or we could talk about the interquartile range. So we know that the interquartile range is 1.09%. So when we tell, when we interpret, that's what we're going to actually look, up, look at and we're gonna talk about. So the show is pretty much done for you. The show involves like your graphs, your display, your summary statistics, um, everything else we can mention in the tell. So this is what you would wanna tell your audience, okay? So what do I wanna tell my audience? I wanna tell them that the distribution of flight cancellations um, percentages is unimodal and skewed right, okay? With about, I'd say 1% to 2% of flights canceled during most months. Okay, and we can see that here um, because that's where the mode is, right? So one, these are percentages, 1% to 2% um, of flights are canceled during most months. It would be very unusual to have a larger percentage of flights canceled for whatever reason. Okay, something else I'd wanna say. I mean, that's not all I'd wanna say. I'd wanna say something like, um, let's see if this will let me, there we go. Um, so, several months had more cancellations than typical, right? And those would be the ones um, at the very far right at the end. Um, I wanna talk about the center, and we're gonna talk more about measures of center here in the next video, but we do know median is a measure of center, and it's easy to find because it's calculated for us. The median percentage of um, canceled flights is 1.65%. So what does that mean? Median's the middle, right? It's the 50th percentile, it means 50% of um, flights canceled was more than 1.65% and 50% was less than 1.65%. So half and half, right? And we wanna measure, we wanna talk about the measure of spread, which we know is range and interquartile range. And um, it wouldn't hurt to mention the IQR here. So the interquartile range, um, remember the middle 50% uh, is 1.09%. Okay, what does that tell me? Um, it tells me that the middle 50% of all months had cancellation rates that were within slightly more than 1% of one another, right? I mean, 1.09% is basically 1%. So we'll add that in here too. The middle 50%, which is the IQR, of all months had cancellation slightly, cancellation rates, um, that were within slightly more than 1% of another. Okay, so that's a good write-up. I mean, when you are trying to describe what you found Think about your audience and how would you explain it to them? You wanna make sure you're using uh, correct statistical vocabulary, um, but you also wanna be down to earth when you explain. Your audience may not be well-versed in statistics, so it's your job to explain to them what you're actually seeing here, right? And what would I get out of this as if I was an audience member that maybe didn't have knowledge of statistics? Okay, well, I can expect that, you know, 
typically one to 2% of flights are canceled during most months, right? So if there's a hundred flights in a day, and there's obviously more than that at larger airports, only one or two of them would be canceled. So I have a 98 to 99% um, chance that my flight will be on time, okay? And that it won't be canceled. It might be late, um, but it, it won't be canceled. So that's a good thing, okay? What are some reasons we have the outliers? Uh, you know, those could be, um, since we're looking at 1994 to um, 2019, what are some reasons that their flights could have been canceled? 9-11, right? In 2001, the, uh, flights were canceled that entire day. There may have been other um, instances where flights were canceled as well. Okay, so that ends that video um, for the five number summary. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and let me know. I'm happy to help. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.